Hey guys, Grassman here. Play more Island War. So today we're talking about what is what guys are what guys are um what guys are OP and what guys are need a bit of a buff. So what guys are what guys need buffs and what guys need nerfs. So we've got all the cards here. And we've got this so we can actually and we've got my thing here so we can actually test out and I can show you some of the OPness. Um So I guess we'll so I was gonna go like just over a cu couple of the better cards, but I'm also gonna touch on some of the worst ones. Or uh, I was just gonna touch on the good and bad ones. I'll, I guess I'll just touch on everything, see how they are. So if you're normal swordsman, they're okay. I think they're pretty. I think they're worse compared to the um, brawlers. If we compare them, level one is 1,200 hit points and 300 damage. So it's less hit points, less damage. 35 speed. These guys, so they're slower, and they have slower hit speed. They have three. Three times slower hit speed. But even then, the damage is just the same. So, overall, swordsmen are worse than brawlers. Brawlers also have the, like, um... The brawler will support the shield after a few times of, of attack, reducing the damage of friendly troops around him. So the brawlers... They're sort of support. They've got 1,200 health and an average of 100 damage per second. This is 100 damage per second and 500 health. So they're slightly faster, faster movement speed, but these guys have the defense and a lot more health. So I think Brawlers are definitely better than Swordsmen. Swordsmen are, they're okay. Um, Dwarf Warriors, another similar melee guy, they don't have any extra ability. They have a 1,500 damage per second and 1,200 health, so... Same health as this guy, less than this guy. Their speed is, again, only 25. So they do more damage per second than the brawler. So they, they so the dwarf warriors do more damage per second. So three hundred damage, and they hit every two seconds, I think. Unless a lower hit speed's better. I think a hit speed of one means they're attacking one time per second. So this should be they're attacking once every two seconds. They've got 10 range, so their range is the same, count is the same, speed is the same as the brawlers, health is the same as the brawlers, damage is, damage per second is higher than the brawlers. Comparing them here, they're again slower, and their hit speed is slower, but they're doing more damage per second, and they again have a lot more health. So dwarf warriors versus swordsmen, dwarf warriors are better. Now that I'm actually looking at stats, I guess that means I should put my Dwarf Warriors where my... I have six of them there. Oh, they're level seven. I guess I'll keep the sevens on. And then the other me one of the other melee guys is the... Where is he? Um, Spearmen. Spearmen are weird. So they, they've only got 550 health points. So again, lower health. Their damage is... Um, their damage is 100 per second, their speed's 20, so they're even slower, but their range is 15, so they have higher range, and they have a knockback. It doesn't actually say that anywhere, it's, it says Spearman's weapons can penetrate and repel, and repel the enemy. So the Spearmen have a knockback, so they have a use regardless, because of their knockback. Um, the Halberder was the melee guy I wanted to talk about, though. So hit speed 0. 0.8 and 150 damage. So he's doing somewhere around 120 or 130 damage per second with 800 hit points. His speed is 35. His range is 15. So again, he's got higher, he's got further range. So his range is the same, so the Spearman and the Halbeer have higher range. Spearman has same damage per second. Um, so Spearman has higher damage per second, has 100 damage per second. Um, Halbeer has around 120 per second, but no knockback as well as more health. And comparing them to the, like, swordsman, again, further range, more health, and more damage per second. Same speed. So halberders or swordsmen, halberders are definitely better than swordsmen. Um, so yeah, swordsmen, not amazing. Um, looking at range units, we have archers, who, 1.5 hit speed, which would mean they're attacking... Every point seven five seconds. That's probably right, actually. I, I think I'm, I think I have that right, because there's no way these guys are attacking three times a second. 
Because then they're doing 900 damage. It's got to be, I think it's like backwards. One one is one second, but then half, 0.5 is every two seconds. Because it should be how many attacks are they getting per second. So they're getting 0.3 per second, meaning it's like three seconds for one attack. So for range troops, the archers have 360 health, 50 damage, and 1.5 speed. The frost archers have way more health, Way more damage. Same hit speed. 30, 85, 3. So Frost Archers are stronger archers plus the ice ability. So archers are not worth it just because Frost Archers are just so much better. There's also the Crossbowman. So he's one guy. Um, Oh no, the Crossbowman is multiple guys. Okay, so. 68 damage is higher than the archers. And higher health. Um, lower speed. Their speed is 20 instead of 30. And their range is the same. So, sacrifice... So, he's, the crossbowmen sacrifice speed for more damage and health. A um, couple of other ranged guys. The hunting gunner. A lot of health. Not a ton of damage. Although, I assume that's damage per shot. And I, I assume he's, like, shooting multiple shots. Because otherwise, he's one guy doing very little damage. 176. Because these are 68 times 3. It's got more health, only slightly higher than at, only slightly higher than 25 speed. I think the hunting gunner is not very good. I haven't exactly used him much, but he doesn't seem good. In the times I did use him, he wasn't helpful. Um, spear thrower. Okay, so spear thrower starts with 59 damage, which is already more than the archers. Um, 60 range instead of 85, so they have to be closer. They have more health, slower hit speed, and same speed. The thing about them, though, is their attacks get stronger. Each time... So, fighting spirit. Each time... What? Peltatists? Throw spears, they will increase percentage of attack. What? Okay, whatever. Did they, did they, was there a name change and then they forgot to change this? Maybe. Anyway. Um, so attack increased 2%. So each time they throw a spear, their damage increases by 2%. So after 50 spears, they'll start doing over... They'll start doing 118 damage. So with every spear throw, they're doing an... So with every... So starting on 60... Hang on. Okay, sorry. So spear throws... So powerful spears that pierce through all enemies and barriers dealing damage to them. So this is why Spear Throwers are one of the best guys in the game. They have an AoE damage increasing attack. Also, they are one of the only guys who will accidentally take down a wall with them. Because the guys for some reason don't seem to like targeting walls unless they have to, Spear Throwers can accidentally take down a wall, which is incredibly helpful. Because accidentally taking down a wall will cause all the melee guys to then run through the wall. And the other, the other, the melee guys otherwise don't target the wall. If you're trying to attack one area, but there's a hole in the wall on the other side, all your guys will try and run around and get destroyed. But if your spear throwers can bust through the wall accidentally or not or purposefully, then they can just run in right there. The so spear thrower is one of the best units in the game. Um, they do higher. They don't do quite as high damage as frost. They do far less damage than frost archers, but of course the frost archers don't have the speed. So, we're done with the Pierce. So, 59 versus 235. Big damage difference, but the Pierce kind of makes up for it. Assuming they're hitting three three or four things at least every time, they're still doing over 200. Um, so, I think that's most of the range, guys. Lapidating Giant. He's kind of different because he, he can deal lasting damage to the target area. So wherever he throws his ball, it, le it leaves the area on fire, which does a bit of damage. I don't know how much damage. Hug and Hurler's Burning Rock scorched the target area, dealing lasting damage to enemies there. Lasting damage, 50. Okay, so it is it is okay damage. The damage itself is only 144. And this is on base level, of course. So it's very slow. Only one guy and only 144 damage. Frost Archers do a lot more than that. His hit speed is 0.3. So he's... Slow hit speed, low attack. When you take the average of hit speed to damage, it's like one third of that, so 
40, 40, 47, 40, 47 ish, something like that. So 47, you can compare to archers, archers do more, archers do more than that. And they're attacking faster. So they're attacking every one and a half seconds, so you have to increase this by... It's attacking two times per three seconds. No, three times per two seconds. So it's it's like 75 that they're doing, versus this guy's doing only a bit per second. Of course, the burning oil might make up for it. I think a lapidating giant, though, or hulking hurler, as it used to be called, is one of the worst cards. Um, Snowman, one of the better cards. So they do 105 damage on base level. Um, so 800 hit points, it's okay for hit points. 105 damage, that's, that's actually really good damage. So that's 50 per second. So that's slightly higher damage than the archers by like one or two. Speed is okay. A count, so it's only one count. Of course, of course, the archers are three, so they're actually doing three times as much, so it's not quite as much as the archers. But that's even worse. Like, one lapidating giant is doing less damage than one archer, and you get three archers. So, um, Snowman, he has a slowing effect, though. Ice detonation. Ice, ice mage. What? Do they, they don't have the words here right, do they? Ice mage summons addition detonation to target... To target area, deal damage to enemies, and slows them down. I don't know what they're talking about in Ice Mage. I do know... Uh, there is no Ice Mage, right? Maybe it's one of the new guys. Um, anyway. It does do a lot... Uh, um, it doesn't do a ton of damage, but its slowing effect kind of does make up for it. And I swear there's some scaling issue. Let me look at this. A level 5 does 275. So 50 to 275. 413. Is that scale right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know what it is about snowmen. Something's really strong about them. They will, uh, like, snowmen, snowmen, spear throwers, and lapidating giants, even like the lapidating giant who's pretty bad, they all have this AoE bit to them that does a lot against, like, groups of h hordes of guys. If you see my bottom left boat here, or my top right boat, those guys would be destroyed by even just lapidating giants, who are probably one of the worst guys in the game. Snowmen destroy them, spear throwers destroy them. If you're having trouble with grouped units, use spear throwers and snowmen. If you're having trouble with solos, frost archers. So using a combination of them all, I have lots, I have frost archers, frost archers, frost archers, spear throwers, spear throwers, fire mages for AoE, snowmen here, because snowmen are better. Um, so let's look at Fire Mages while we're talking about Snowmen. So you have higher damage and the same health. Half a second of hit speed. Um, so the Snowmen are slightly slower. Range 90, range 60. So Snowmen have further range. So Snowmen have further range and the slowing. Fire Mages have higher damage. So it depends. Do you want damage or do you want the slowing? Uh, the slowing, I think, is definitely worth it. The Fire Mages do do a lot of damage. But... If I could choose, I'd probably, like, I'd probably stick this one here and then put a snowman there. I just don't think I have another snowman. I have level 2. It's not good enough, though. Yeah, so, um, yeah, snow, so, snowmen, so frost archers and snowmen are definitely the best ranged ones, and spear throwers. Um, as for the melee, I think it was, like, what conclusion did we come to? I think it was like, Halbeerders have more damage per second, Spearmen have the knockback, and like Brawlers have more health, Dwarf Warriors have more attack. So bra Brawlers have more defense, because they have the shield, and Dwarf Warriors have more attack. And Swordmen are just Swordmen. They're more common, so you might be able to get them to 10 faster. That's why I'm using them in this one spot, because I have level 7 ones. Um, so now let's look at some... Let's look at some solo guys. So, or I guess we'll talk about Mace Warrior first. Mace Warrior is... One, he's got tons of health. Compared to some other melee guys, tons of health. 
360 damage every second. So that's 3.6 times more than the swordman. His speed is 30. His range is 15. So it's even further. It's the far. It's the far range. It's the same range as like a spearman. And the mace warrior's attack will increase the damage taken by the enemy. Mace warrior is probably the best melee unit. He's got tons of health. Attack from Mace Warrior will cause increase all damage received by the enemy. This effect can be stacked up to five times on each enemy duration. Two. Okay. So when he attacks, damage increases on that they take. It increases for two seconds, and it can increase up to five times. It can be stacked up to five times. So I don't know what I don't know what the percent more damage they take is. It doesn't say, but it's can be. But it's for two seconds. So as long as they attack, then we, and anything else that hits within two seconds does more damage. So what have we not talked about? Bombers. So we'll just go kind of in order now. So bombers runs runs in a straight line and explodes upon collision with enemy units, dealing huge amount of damage. That it's what it says there is misleading. It targets buildings. A building targeter is kind of like really es essential. Bombers. I recommend you have at least one boat with like two of them. I have the two here, a six and a five. I could do more. Bombers are really good because they do incredibly high damage. If you look at their damage, it's 400, but it increases out of proportion. It goes from 400 to almost... It, it almost triples. And then here again, it's almost... It's almost tripling every time. More than doubling. Except for there. So, f 4 to 5 isn't a big difference, but all the other levels, it's almost doubling. Or it's almost tripling, then almost doubling. The first few are really important. Anyway... Um, it specifically targets buildings. 45 speed, I believe, is like the, what, second highest in the game? Arctic Wolves have seven, have 80 speed. But I think 45 is the second highest speed in the game. Um, it's only one of them. But the damage on level 5 or 6 is, is 11,500 in level 6. For reference... Level 11 City Hall has 54,000. Army Camp only has 6,000. Gold Mine has just over 6,000. The Level 5 Tower has only 5,000. Level 4 has 3.5, or 3.9. So, the Bombers pretty much one-shot anything except for the Town Hall, to which they do about one-fifth to one-quarter of its health. The Bombers are incredibly strong. And you could very well make, you could very well, if you just took six boats, filled them up completely with bombers, you could very well easily win. If you filled, filled six boats with just bombers, you'd destroy everything. Bombers are one of the best units in the game. Because they just, they, um, they target the buildings. So you could even just, you could have five boats and you could save your sixth just full of bombers. And then once you failed everything else, if you just need to rush the thing, you can just put six bombers in and they'll go rush it. You get... Bombers can be used can be used quite diversely, and they are incredibly strong. I usually just spam mine in. They will target walls and stuff that leads them to somewhere else. They'll usually just target like towers and stuff. That's another reason the towers aren't very strong. They don't do tons of damage, and they get like destroyed by they get obliterated by bombers. Of course, so like having something like this, these guys here will try will hopefully stop the bombers, but they could still. They have a fair bit of health too. They're fairly tanky. Um. Looking at the level 5 ones, 7,000 health versus these level 5, 1,600. Even the Giants. The Giants level 1 has 1,100 health. So a bomber on level 5 is like half a level 1 Giant. 7,6. So a bomber is like, has a tenth of a Giant's health. On average. Doesn't quite on the first level, but on average. So bombers are very good. Um, Arctic wolves target ranged guys. So ranged guys include archers, fire mages, heal wizards, spear throwers, snowmen, frost archers, lapidating giants, nuns, hunting gunners, and crossbowmen. And then after that, they target the melee guys. H Arctic wolves have high dam have high damage but low health. So three thousand health. Oh, never mind. I'm gonna eat my words. They have more health than the swordsmen somehow. Swordsmen are really bad, apparently. They don't get they don't get good health boosts on levels. But they so mainly they target archers, which again don't they have um seemingly high damage, but really the damage only is only six hundred. If we look at like most other guys. 
Here it goes 1300 divided by 3. Here their damage is 400. So okay, so yes. As I said, they do have high damage relative to their level. Level 5 ones have 600. And of course the archers have very little health. So seven, 700, 7,000 health. So that means 6, 7, 8 hits from the wolves will kill a frost archer. And their attack speed is 1.5. So again, 3 hits per every 2 seconds. So just like 3 of these guys, at 3 hits per 2 seconds, in 2 seconds we'll get 9 hits. So in 2 seconds, 3 of them could kill a, could kill a level 5 frost archer. But two of them level 5 could kill a level 5 Frost Archer. Three of them. Words. Um, so Arctic Wolves are good. Giants are your tank. Giants are amazing. Honestly, this was supposed to be like buffs and nerfs. For buffs and nerfs, Giants could use a nerf. Frost Archers could use a nerf. Swordsmen seem to require a buff. They don't get like good damage scaling. Level 1, they're okay, but then everything else after that, they don't, they don't scale good. I was going to say Dwarf Warriors could use a buff, but after looking at their damage, they're actually pretty good. Um, so comparing Giant to Frost Titan, Frost Titan again has the slowing ability. I think it's slowing. Decreased attack speed of enemies nearby. So movement speed and attack speed reduction. So level 5, they have 50,000 health. So they have less health than the Giants. Nine, so that's 9,000 damage, and much less damage. So they're doing one-ninth of the damage, and they have around one, one, um, they have around one, one out of two, one-half the health. Um, but they do have the freezing ability, so that's up to you. I don't personally think they're worth it for the slowing. The slowing is pretty good, but if you're using snowmen, which are really good anyways, you may as well be using snowmen and giants. I've got the one, just because I'm kind of using the, I think I have one, yeah. He's only level one, though. I, I should actually... I don't really have much else to put there. Oops. Um, but yeah, their Frost Titan's not Frost Titan's not very good. Been nothing but talking today. Um, what else? Um, Heal Wizard versus None will compare. So Heal Wizard does damage, so twelve eleven hundred hit points, a hundred damage, and Pilgrim heals Pilgrim. What? Heal Wizard heals. So they need to update this, by the way. Heal Wizard heals all nearby friendly units. Um, heal 300. I don't know how often. Is it every second? Assuming it's every second. This heal is 135. That's even worse. What? I thought nuns are supposed to be better. Oh, they're normal. Normal attack is heal a friendly foe. So every... So once every two... So every two seconds, they heal 130. And they heal 135... Just normally. I assume every second or something. Is it just me or do none seem worse? Less health, no damage. I guess they don't run up and get themselves killed. But it's 130 and 135, so even when you combine that, that's 265. And this guy's hit speeds every second. This ability is only even like. 50, 56, it's only 65 every second, because it's only going every two seconds, so nuns don't seem great. Although I might be missing something, I don't know, how, it doesn't say how often the heal happens, so you, so maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, Berserker. When his health drops below 50%, he becomes extremely strong. So his attack speed increases by 150%. So that means he gets two and a half times faster attack. Already on the top, top of one times two, that would be that would be, so one half times and put it, would be six, and put it to one. So add one, two is two, four, plus six. So that makes him attack three times a second. So when he drops below 50% health, he attacks three times a second at about 300 health damage. That's 600 damage, and that's 600 damage a second. Is that right? No. So there's an attack speed increase. So he's attacking three times per second. So it's almost. So it's almost. So it's like eight and a half hundred. So comparing it to like swordsman, he's definitely better than swordsman. 
Of course, there is only one of him. So what other one can we compare him to? The Templar. So, Berserker has less damage going into more damage than the Templar. And his health already outmatches him. His hit speed's the same. Normal speed is higher. And his range is lower. The Templar has the Refraction. The Sacred Swordsman transforms into a, a light for quick slashes, free from any attacks, immune to all effects. I have no idea how this works. It says damage, it says trigger number, which I assume it means the targets. It seems, he seems okay, I don't, he doesn't really explain his ability well or how it works, so I don't know how good he is necessarily. Um, we are running out of time, so what have I not covered? Um, got most guys. Shadow Assassin's like the last guy I haven't covered. Or second last, there's the Airbender's court, well, as well. Um, this guy teleports. Deathful Assassin that would flash and back, flash enemies directly. So, Airbender, you all know what he does, he stuns, he isn't... This ability stuns ranged troops. So a normal attack, and then ability stuns ranged troops. One of the best guys in the game. Shadow Assassin, he teleports. Let me show you. So I've got Shadow Assassins on my 5th and 6th boats. Do you see there's archers up there? Trigger this bomb. There's these spear throwers here. Watch what happens. Boom, teleport. So those guys teleport, and they can even make it up two levels. If I would have put them back here, they would have teleported up onto this guy. So the Shadow Assassins can teleport, making them, again, one of the best guys in the game. You can put, you can hide your archers up, like, you could have just put tons of archers up here on these top ones and make it really hard. Just Shadow Assassins to teleport up and kill them all. They don't target archers, but their teleport ability targets archers. So the wolves target archers, but these guys teleport at archers. And they only teleport once. But they're still very good because of that. And of course the airbender, you, you can see how they couldn't shoot there, that was because of the airbender. So it is only an ability, it doesn't happen every attack, but he has an ability that triggers every couple of seconds or so. Maybe every like, 10 seconds I'd estimate. And you can see how much health that berserker has by how much fire he takes. But yeah, airbender and shadow assassin, some of the best guys in the game. I guess it's not really what needs buffs and what needs nerfs. It's more like what's strong and what's weak. But yeah, Shadow Assassin, Airbender, better guy are like the be some of the better guys. Dwarf warriors and frost archers and brawlers and spear throwers, and snowmen. Berserkers and mace warriors are okay. Everything kind of has its use, you know. Spearmen have the knockback. Giants are giants; they just tank everything. The only guys I'd say are really bad are like the crossbowmen. Well. Crossbowmen of health, they have very low damage, though. So, Crossbowmen, um, Frost Titan, Hunting Gunner, Lapidating Giant, Swordsman. But everything else is, like, it all kind of has its use. They're all, they're all different. There's no, like, repeat cards. It's no, like, Mini P.E.K.K.A. versus Knight case, where it's, like, the Mini P.E.K.K.A. is just so obviously better, except for the fact that it's a little bit more expensive. That's in, that's, that would be, like, Clash Royale. Like, Mini P.E.K.K.A. costs one more, but it's so much better. Here it's like, they all kind of have their own use. There's a couple of guys that just aren't quite there. Crossbowman, Hunting Gunner, Frost Titan could use buffs. But other than that, Lapidating Giant needs a big buff. Giving him some buff to damage, or a big buff to the Burning Oil ability, I'd say like, increase this to like 150 or something, because he's just not worth it right now. So yeah, that's my, that's my advice. Again, I'm not, I don't just know everything... Um, there's, like, if you want to know everything, I also recommend there's someone who made a tier list on the guys, apparently. I'd recommend you go watch him, because he probably knows more about this than me. Because this is just what I've, this is what I've observed from my time playing. I have played for quite a while, but, again, I don't know much about the Hunting Gunner or Crossbowman. Frost Titan, I've only got one level one guy. So I, I would recommend you go also watch the playlist. But, or the tier list, sorry. But, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you like if you like my content, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.